Hey there! Just sitting here in beautiful Tennessee on a rocking chair. But I guess I could take a break and have a study guide party! Ah! Hello! Alright, so we've got a cozy cabin and it's time to talk about science because I know that's exactly what you want to be doing right now is talking about science because you're so bored over break and you just need to think about science to get your brain working again. So here we're going to start off talking about our study guide and then we're going to go over the essential learnings too. Okay, so the first question is what do radioactive decay and gravitational energy have to do with thermal energy inside of the earth? So the first thing is, well, what are gravitational energy and radioactive decay? So the first thing is radioactive decay is when an atom breaks down. So some specific types of atoms, and you can, if you're curious, look them up, um, will break down in little parts, their protons fly away and it's a ton of energy that's released. And so in doing that it creates thermal energy much like this cozy fire whoops this cozy fire <laughs> um, and gravitational energy is going to play a part too because we know that gravity pulls more dense material down everything's getting pulled toward the center but the more dense material gets pulled down toward the center and as it does so um, originally when the planet was forming there was some friction between all the different types of material and so as that friction happened it created this heat that's still present inside of the earth so both radioactive decay and gravitational energy are sources of heat for inside the earth and that's huge when we start talking about what's happening which gets to our next question is what is a term describing the movement of more and less dense material inside of the earth it is convection currents and convection currents are completely dependent upon this heat source inside of the earth so the next question said to label boxes that correspond to the diagram where the substance is more and less dense so I've given you two scenarios one is over here where is it more or less dense with the cold rock sinking? So we know that cold materials huddle together. Think about those penguins out on an iceberg and they're cold. They huddle together. So the atoms of cold material get close together. And so they're more dense, they are close together, and they sink. And you can see that here in this cycle. They sink, sink, sink. Well, down here is where the heat source is on Earth. So it gets hot and hot and hot and hot, and they spread out. Just think about, you don't want to be close to people when it's really hot and when it's really, you know, gross outside. You don't want to be close. You want lots of room and a distance. So as heat increases, the atoms spread apart and it rises and rises and rises. And then the cycle continues because it reaches the top part of the cycle right here where it's not a heat source anymore. And so that cools down again and it sinks and becomes more dense and it can you know, happens again and again and again. And we know our song, Convection Currents. Say it with me, Convection Currents. Less dense rises, more dense sink. Okay, so there's just a hint of the song. You can sing it on your own or go download it from iTunes. Okay, so explain why convection currents happen. Well, I just kind of did that. So the idea is the inside of Earth is very hot. It heats up the particles. They spread apart. They become less dense and they rise. And then there's not that heat source up there. So they cool off, become more dense, and they sink. And it's all about the density. As they get hot, they spread apart. Less dense. As they get cold, they come together more dense and um, make sure you understand that that within this convection current it's more dense as it's sinking down here and it's less dense as it's been rising um, it does um, get more dense as you go deeper into the earth but within the convection current itself there's the less up here and more dense here now as you go closer to the center of the earth it's way more dense than the material at the convection current but just within the convection current itself it's more dense as it has sunk and now it's at the bottom all right, so now we've got this funny graph. Oh, and I think my little pictures, let's see if we can fix that, have become a little bit off of that. Nope. Yes. Oh, right. let's see if I can fix this. <laughs> Not quite. I'll just get a new colored pen. All right, so now we've got to look at this drawing here, and it told you to circle where there was a change in a layer. So I had some there originally, and somehow they got all silly. So I'm going to use a blue pen. So every time you see this big horizontal jump that's telling you that there was a change in a layer so how do we know well the speed is going to jump either faster or slower due to a new density so every time you see that horizontal jump in speed whether it's going faster or slower it's indicating that there was a change in density and that the wave now is traveling at a different speed and you remember when we did those cups with the different materials that the different material their medium is their density was going to change how the wave traveled so 
the more dense it is, it's going to go faster. And we also did that with the tuning forks. And we put it on the table or we did it in the air. And on the table, it was way more dense. The sound was clearer and crisper. And so we had some evidence that it's going to travel faster, at least mechanical waves. All right, so the next question is, what do we know about the outer core and what data shows us this? Well, we know the outer core is a liquid and that S waves can't travel in the outer core. So how do we see that? Well, the waves just stop. There's no more s waves present in the inner core or the outer core because they can't get there and so we also notice that the p waves slow down and you can see our velocity is up here and it drops down in velocity and in case you had a hard time understanding this graph and we've seen one already like this before a couple times but over here is the depth and it gets lower and lower and lower and you can actually see on this graph the density is listed as well and i think i cut that off but it lists the density and down here is our velocity so velocity of zero and it gets faster and faster and faster Faster and faster as you move to the right it gets deeper and deeper and deeper the farther down on the y-axis you go and also you can see the density as they go deeper in depth the density increases so that also tells us then when we get to letter C what do you know about density change from the outer core to the inner core well we know it gets more dense first of all we can see right here that from uh, the outer core to the inner core it gets more dense just by the data listed on the chart but we also know because the speed of the waves is increasing that the density is increasing as well so we have two kind of pieces of evidence there all right next question is which layer of earth is the deepest and which is the most dense the inner core is both the deepest and the most dense and we can see that right there on the graph but we also know that just from different experiences as well all right, so over here now um, is talking about how did the Earth get like this? So what is planetary differentiation? It's just kind of a long, complicated word, and all it means is that the Earth and other planets have layers and that those layers are based on density and that gravity pulled more dense material to the center and less dense layers are up on the outer portion near the crust. So why? It's because of gravity, which I'm just skipping down to number C here. Um, and I also kind of skipped B, but included it. And so it's where is it the most dense? It's the most dense in the core in the center. Okay, and then it gets less dense on the outside. All right, so now we go down to um, letter, oh, letter D. So what are the two things that contributed to the heat inside of Earth and other planets? Well, we kind of already talked about this in an earlier question, but it's radioactive decay and gravity. That's where the heat was created for the inside of the Earth. And it's kind of like this big furnace happening. And there's just a lot of heat present from the friction left over, but there's also that radioactive decay, which is still contributing to the heat. Okay, now we look at this number five. Um, we have to draw or circle where refraction happens. So every time you see a circle, there's a bend in the path. And even this entire thing, because a layer itself is not completely the same density. It's not homogenous. It has some variation in density as you go through the layer, and that causes the waves to bend through a single layer. So each one of those circles is refraction. And we have uh, we saw those the straws in a cup. And as the straws look bent, it's kind of that same idea of you can see the waves here looking bent. All right, it also asks, why do they refract? It's all about, like I said, density. Density is the name of the game about this unit. It's all about density. When things get hot or cold, it changes their density. When layers have different densities, it changes how the waves travel. So it's all about density. Now there's also reflection. So you can see right here that the wave is bouncing off, and that's what you had to draw. Reflection means to bounce off, and that happens to waves as well inside the Earth. And again, why do they go faster? Why do they go slower? Why do they reflect? Why do they refract? It's all about density. And important, remember this, is that they go faster when it's more dense. They go slower when it's less dense. They go um, bend and change. And there's some more physics behind the angles that they go. But they will change their angle also based on if it's more or less dense. All right, so I'm going to pause here and get to the essential learnings. So make sure you watch this again, listen to some examples, and make sure you get the idea about the key information about density and how that's going to really impact things. Okay, I'm back. I know it seemed like a really long time. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the essential learnings. So remember, this is just a good thing for you to practice on your own to see if you can, using the context clues, figure out what the information should be in the blanks. But I'll kind of quickly explain it, and this should be just another study tool to help you out. So the first one, the Earth is made up of lots of layers, and so are other planets. These layers have different densities. As layers get created, it's known as the process of planetary differentiation. Planets form layers because gravity pulls down material toward the center of the planet and more dense materials sink to the core. Energy is transformed inside of the Earth because of this. 
The friction from the materials sliding past each other as they form layers creates a lot of thermal energy or heat that makes the inside of the earth hot. Inside of the earth there's also radioactive decay which means that atoms break down and release a lot of thermal energy or heat that also makes the inside of the earth hot. With all that energy that's created inside of the earth, the matter of earth gets moved around by it. One way this happens is when tectonic plates release seismic energy and create an earthquake and uh, the plates Oh, excuse me, the tectonic plates release seismic energy, create an earthquake, and the land gets moved. That's one way that energy can move stuff on Earth. Another way this happens is through convection currents, which happen because more dense coal material sinks, less dense warm material rises. This is where you can remember our song. Because the inside of Earth is so hot, it heats up matter in the mantle, which rises and it, as it gets less dense, and it cools near the surface, gets more dense, and sinks back down. And this cycle can happen over and over and over again, and it causes tectonic plates to move. So the layers of the earth are whoop, the core, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. The outer core is the only layer that is a liquid, while the others are all solid. We know about the inside of earth specifically because of what information we can gather from earthquakes. The waves from earthquakes are known as seismic waves. There are body waves which travel through the earth and surface waves which travel through the outside of earth. The two types of body waves, which are S waves and P waves, are both similar and different. So number eight is all about P waves. They are the first kind of wave that comes from an earthquake, and they're the fastest waves. They are longitudinal, longitudinal. Those are the smacky ones, which hit each other like dominoes. And they can travel through solids and liquids, so therefore they can go through the outer core. So we have evidence that P waves go through the entirety of the Earth. They don't stop anywhere. S waves are the second kind of wave that comes from an earthquake, and they're the second fastest wave, and they're transverse. Transverse. So transverse ones are the wiggly kind of waves. And because of this, they cannot travel through liquids. S waves will never go through the outer core because of just, there's some funny stuff with how liquids respond to these kind of wiggly transverse waves. When P and S waves travel through the earth, they have specific behaviors that they exhibit. They can both reflect, which is bouncing, um, when they come to a new layer. They can also refract, which is where their paths will bend as they travel through a layer. They refract and reflect because of the densities of the layers, um, and as these change, they affect the wave's behavior. Both P and S waves will travel faster when the density of a wave is more dense. So the more tightly packed together mechanical waves, which include earthquake and sound waves, will travel faster. This means as waves travel deeper to the center of Earth, they get faster and faster and faster. When they get to a new layer, they often jump in speed very quickly as the density of the new layer affects them. When they get to the outer core, P waves will slow down and S waves will stop. Okay? So those are the essential learnings. Take some time and pause this anywhere if you haven't done so already. Go back. Um, make sure you listen to this. This is kind of the, the meat and potatoes of everything, the most important details to help you. So maybe you want to do this first before your study guide. Maybe you want to do the study guide first. Whatever works for you, but this is definitely going to be a really good tool to help you out. Okay? So happy studying, and I'll see you soon. It's microphone and mommy's computer. Yeah. Can you say, don't forget to study? Don't forget to study. Can you look at the camera and say it? Say, don't forget to study. Don't forget to study.